what is up you guys um this video is different and I finally decided to make this video because a lot of my supporters and my subscribers are interested in my pregnancy and interested in more so the behind the scenes stuff that I don't necessarily share with you guys and there's not a reason I don't share a lot with you guys it's just me being a youtuber and then me being you know all over social media especially like on instagrams my facebook groups things like that i still like to have a lot of my own privacy and i'm learning to open up and, and share with the world things that i have went through and gone through but i feel like in order for you guys to understand my pregnancy you have to know <laughs> uh, what's going on so one thing I can say, I hope this video definitely helps someone out there who may be trying to have a baby or, you know, maybe, or someone who, how do I say it? Because cause this, this topic is really sensitive to me, but someone who may have lost a baby and is, you know, is trying to get past that and grow past that and maybe try to conceive again. But I do want to sh share with you guys my story. So I guess here we go. Um, so it all started, well, me and my boyfriend have been together for a little over five years. So we've been together for a while. And when I was like about 18 or 19, something around, some sometime around that point, I was diagnosed with PCOS. And if you don't know what PCOS is, it's basically polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if you don't know too much about it, you can always just Google PCOS and there's a lot of information that would pop up for you if you are interested in learning more information about that. But uh, but uh, spin off to PCOS is infertility issues. So for a long time, I thought that I could not get pregnant. I thought that I could not have a baby. Just because I, when you do have PCOS, you have very irregular periods as well. And you know, it, nothing is, is regular in, inside of your body if you have certain stages of PCOS. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what stage that I had, but I do know that I did not have periods regularly. And I do know that I never got pregnant and me and my boyfriend ha had stopped using protection a long time. A long time ago in our relationship so and nothing ever happened so I was never really worried about getting pregnant especially due to the fact that I was young if you guys don't know I just turned 23 March 11 so give me a pat on the back for turning 23 this past month but uh, but anywho I, I didn't necessarily care too much about having PCOS or having an infer infertility issue just because I was not trying to get pregnant at the time. But then as our relationship progressed and we saw our peers, you know, having children and, you know, people just growing, growing up, that's when the thought started to happen. Um, but it wasn't anything that I was, was set on or anything like that. So fast forward to December of 2017. In December of 2017, I had the VSG surgery. If you guys don't know what that is, that is the vertical sleep gastrectomy. I ended up having that surgery, which uh, made me lose a nice amount of weight. So I had lost a lot of weight. And if you guys look into my old videos, you'll probably be able to tell that I did lose a large amount of weight. Um, so I had that done in December 2017. But before I had to before I got that done, you had to lose a certain amount of weight prior to having the surgery within a, within a certain amount of months. So I ended up losing weight and my periods then started to become regular. Me and my boyfriend were still having sex normally without protection. We weren't preventing nor were we, you know, switching things up at all. But nothing was happening. I wasn't getting pregnant, so I didn't really think much of it. So fast forward until after I had the surgery and more weight started to fall off. My periods were still regular and we were still having sex like normal. And around June of 2018, that's when I ended up getting pregnant. And I got pregnant and it was the best feeling in life because for so long I thought I couldn't get pregnant and for so long I thought you know like maybe I'm just one of those girls who can't get pregnant and I just dealt with it 
but when it happened I was in total shock I was nervous in the beginning but then I got really excited as like you know the weeks went on even though I was so early the weeks went on I was very excited and very happy to to be pregnant um, so I would say I was well I found that I was pregnant and I went to the doctor my HCG levels were going up and that's basically the developmental process of having a baby in case you don't know as far as like um, whatever is going on within your blood and all that stuff they're able to take blood and see the the quantity of your HCG levels and I believe every two days they're supposed to double so everything was going fine I was indeed pregnant but the doctor's office that I was going to at the time they didn't necessarily want to see their patients until you were eight weeks now due to the fact that I did have irregular periods I just wasn't sure how many weeks I was and my HCG levels didn't necessarily tell me how many weeks I was it was just the estimate like oh you're three you're four weeks just go to the doctor and just schedule your appointment in four weeks so you can actually see with um the prenatal start your prenatal care so that's what I did so you know you I found out I was pregnant I started to make adjustments for my life for my new new life basically and everything was going fine so I in my head when I scheduled that four week appointment I was about eight weeks pregnant and I went to that appointment and that's at that appointment that's where you get certain well at, at my doctor's office that's where I got certain tests done a routine checkup that day and then I also was able to get an ultrasound that day as well so everything was going good I was talking to the doctors everything was going amazing we're laughing we're me and my boyfriend are like looking at each other super excited about this things like that and it comes time to the actual ultrasound now when I get to the ultrasound room this was new to me but um because I was so so early basically I was around eight weeks at least I thought I was eight weeks that's when they did an inside ultrasound instead of the over the belly ultrasound but they did the, the inside ultrasound and when they did that uh, you can tell the technician was having a hard time finding whatever she was looking for now I know because I've been through this but uh, at the t when you are pregnant there's three layers to a pregnancy there's there's the gestational sac there's a gestational sac inside of the gestational sac there's there's a yolk sac and then there's an embryo I, I just noticed when I was laying there the technician or the ultrasound tech she she kept probing me and, and she was taking a long time to you know find whatever she was looking for so after she was done looking she basically called the doctor back in and the doctor explained to me that there was that I had a gestational sac but I didn't have a yolk sac nor did I have an embryo and if I was eight weeks I would have had the uh, I would have had all three which is a gestational sac a yolk sac and an embryo inside of me and if you guys don't know what a the, the gestational sac is what the baby and the yolk sac lives in the yolk sac is how the baby gets its nutrients before I believe it forms into a placenta and then the baby is the embryo and I was missing the yolk sac and the embryo so I just had the home that they would live in uh, so my doctor was like well are you sure you're such and such amount of weeks and I was like yeah I'm pretty sure you know like I'm, I'm pretty sure um so basically she was like well maybe you are sooner than you think you are so how about you come back in next week I don't remember she said two weeks or next week I'm pretty sure she said next week and she was like just come back next week we'll do another ultrasound and see where you are then so I was like okay but for those of you who don't know me I am a worrier I am a Google a chronic Google user and everyone knows that Google isn't the best software to use when things are going on because they'll tell you you have something when you don't necessarily have it so I was googling what all of this stuff was meaning and a lot of that stuff meant miscarriage a lot of that stuff meant that um, it wasn't a, a viable pregnancy things like that so I was getting stressing I was stressing myself out a lot which wasn't good so then I was getting more HCG levels ran because that's what the doctor requested while I was there as well and the HCG levels I go once and then two days later I go again 
So I remember she called me to let me know what my HCG levels were, if they were decreasing, if they were rising how they were supposed to. And I remember she called me and I was sitting on the edge of my bed and my boyfriend was there. And that's when she told me, she was like, unfortunately, your HCG levels are not doubling. They're going down, which does mean that you are at a risk for a miscarriage. And I just, everything went numb. For one, I was confused, like, I was questioning God and things like that, like, why me? I thought I couldn't get pregnant, got pregnant, and then it gets taken away from me. Like, I was just, my mind was all over the place. My mind was definitely all over the place, but she still told me to still come in that, that following week to still do an ultrasound so we can still see what's going on inside of me. And I was still getting positive pregnancy tests. I was still having my pregnancy symptoms. And at the time, that was just sore boob. So basically, I drove myself crazy on Google, on babycenter.com, things like that, asking, can, can your pregnancy still progress with HCG levels dropping? And the answer, nine times out of 10, they don't. Some people, they do. Some people have miracles happen. And even though your HCG levels are dropping, the baby is still growing. But in my case, my doctor basically said, you're probably gonna have a miscarriage. She said it a little nicer than that, but in so many words, that's what she meant. So I went in for my next appointment, you know, with that in the back of my head, thinking that like, hey, unfortunately, this is what it is. And I ended up getting another inside ultrasound and the ultrasound basically showed the same thing that it was showing the week prior and it was showing no growth. And instead of my gestational sac continuing to grow, my gestational sac was enclosing on itself, which basically showed that was a potential risk for a miscarriage. So that's when my, the, my doctor basically came in and she was explaining to me my options. Um, and you don't really have many options when you are going through a miscarriage. You basically can let it happen naturally. You can insert a pill inside of your vagina to speed up the process, or you can have what they call a DNC. And that's when it's a procedure where they put you to sleep or you don't have to go to sleep. They can put you in like a twilight phase where you're woke, but you're numb and they put you to sleep and they basically go into your uterus and clear everything out. And that's it. Um, whew, that makes me, it, it, it brings back a lot of memories because I was really low at that point and I was, I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't stop crying and things like that. So basically I opted to do a DNC, which is a surgical procedure where they went in and cleared me out and made sure I didn't have any leftover tissues. Uh, but the hardest part was the day before my scheduled DNC. The hardest part was when they basically tell you they can't do anything for you and you need to just go home. And I went home just waiting to have a miscarriage and, and you know, like still feeling sensations and bloating and cramping and cramping and sore boobs and things like that with the idea of still being pregnant. But in actuality, I, my body was preparing to just miscarry. So I was hoping, so I had signed up, I had scheduled my DNC, which was about three days later or two days later, but on the night before my DNC is when I started to just naturally miscarry. And that was one of the hardest, most painful things that I had been through. Um, it was very painful, it was hard, especially like with not being able to get pregnant and then getting pregnant and then that unfortunately and then miscarrying like that was difficult you know so i remember being in the shower and i had this this horrible like cramp at the time and um i was basically standing there and it was so hard to stand and i just remember this huge like sack falling out of me and that was basically my gestational sack that i had inside and it was tissue and it was bloody and it was gross um and it just, it just made me so sad. Like that is where my, like even though technically I didn't necessarily have an embryo inside of me, that was where my baby was, you know? So that, it definitely like made me cry, and made me sad and things like that. But then I, I, you know, I prayed about, I prayed about it. I talked to God. I, you know, my mom came over, my boyfriend was at work at the time. So he ended up coming home and we just, 
you know, I, I had a lot of comfort. But that next morning, that's when I had my scheduled procedure. So I went in for my procedure in excruciating pain. It was the most horrible pain that I've ever felt. It was like period cramps times 100. It was very painful. And uh, that's when I, I they admitted me into into the hospital and I got my surgery well my procedure after the, they put me to sleep I went into the operating room I remember being woke in the operating room they then put me to sleep and I woke up and I was 100% fine I didn't have any any cramping any bloating I felt 100% normal um, I wasn't fatigued or anything like that and I was at the time I was just happy for it to be over and that might sound crazy in some people's eyes, but I was extremely just happy that I wasn't in pain anymore, that I can try to move on from this situation and things like that. But the one thing that they told me were, was to make sure I don't have any intercourse for two weeks after the procedure. And I was like, okay, you know, so I went home, I was fine, I wasn't in pain, and I got back to my normal life. Of course, me and my boyfriend didn't have sex for almost two weeks uh but of course i <laughs> but for some reason i was very horny this is tmi but i was very horny um close to that two week mark so we ended up having sex and it was just normal sex our normal sex nothing had changed we weren't preventing we weren't uh trying or anything like that and the doctors told me once I left that my HCG levels were going to continue to drop, but I would possibly still get a positive pregnancy sign if I did test myself like right away after the procedure because it needed time for my HCG levels to drop. Uh, so like I said, that two week pass, um, me and him ended up having sex, I wanna say around day 10, maybe day nine or I don't know, it was somewhere like that. Um, and I, my body still felt weird. My body felt really weird still after, you know, a month after the procedure. So I was like, you know, I was, I, I was, I was still getting positive pregnancy signs and things like that. So that's why I just figured it was all from the first, first pregnancy. All my HCG levels probably still hadn't dropped. And a recap for you guys: I got pregnant, pregnant in May, had my procedure at the end of July waited two weeks so we're around like august now and i tested myself again and i was still getting a faint pregnancy line I, I tested myself a few days later i got a negative pregnancy line and then i tested myself a day or two days after that negative pregnancy sign and that's when i got another positive sign so i was so confused on what was going on with my body what was my body reacting to did I potentially get pregnant a week and a half after I just miscarried? I didn't know. So of course I started to Google things and Google basically explained, explained to me, yes, it's possible to get pregnant after a DNC and after a miscarriage, but a lot of women, it takes time for your body, for your body to readjust. So you can ovulate again, things like that. But um, I ended up going back to the doctors, getting my HCG levels ran, and my HCG levels were increasing again. And I just bawled and I cried, and you know I, I was very skeptical, skeptical because I was like, if I'm pregnant again, like since I'm pregnant again so soon, is something bad bound to happen? It was. I was just so worried and so scared about what was going to happen. But. Um, that basically, oh, I don't want to cry, but that basically leads me up to my rainbow baby that I am currently pregnant with. He has been doing amazing. This pregnancy has been very simple. Um, he'll be here in a little over two weeks, and I'm just so grateful. Today makes the day that I've, I am full term, so he can come anytime after today. I'm 100% full term, he's doing great. You know, like, and, and it's just a crazy feeling to know that like, I went through that horrible situation and then I was then blessed with my rainbow baby a week and a half to two weeks after that devastating situation with me happened. So I can only do nothing but think, I can only thank God for allowing me to be a mom, allowing me to, <sighs> have a son and here he is in case you guys want to see 
maybe I can put it somewhere but this is him and his name is journey and the reason his name is journey is because it was such a hurdle getting to where I am and it was one heck of a journey getting here so that is my story that is how I'm now pregnant with my rainbow baby and we're expecting his arrival April 8th of 2019 um, but I definitely do hope that this video opened helped helped you guys understand me get a little personal with me um, but yeah I have so many more pregnancy vlogs not pregnancy vlogs but I have so much many more vlogs that I do want to make that are more personal and relate to my pregnancy and things like that I cannot wait to show you guys him in his beautiful face and I can't wait to meet him but don't forget to like this video uh, don't forget to subscribe and if you happen to be going through a miscarriage or you know went through one and you're trying to conceive again don't give up um, everything happens for a reason I am a very firm believer in that and when it's your time it will be your time and that's what I had to learn as well so I love you guys and I will see you guys in my next video bye